You know the old saying, you cannot tell a book by its cover. When you look at Debbie Abraham, she is a beautiful Christian lady inside and out. She is a mother, grandmother, wife of a pastor, and a loving Christian. She does all the things every normal lady does every day. Debbie has lost her daughter, son-in-law, and her three beautiful grandchildren in a house fire. Debbie Abraham has found that godly hope that does not disappoint. Welcome to Crossing Path. April 15th, 2016 was the date of my daughter's tragedy. Our daughter, our son-in-law, and three grandchildren died. Their house was on fire. They were upstairs sleeping. They died of smoke inhalation. Jackie, Mike, this is going on right now, 437 Roosevelt Avenue here in Bellevue, right behind me here, what appears to be possibly a multi-family home, multiple fire departments on the scene here. We've got Bellevue, Emsworth, Avalon, and some others. Uh, right now, we've heard that several people have been pulled out of this house, possibly up to five or even more, some children, some adults. Uh, CPR was being performed on children a bit earlier, and there have been some people transported to the hospital. this tragedy seven years ago today, which is the exact same day of our daughter and our son-in-law's tragedy. I can remember it as if it was today. I was talking to my daughter about planning my granddaughter's birthday party. The next day, her husband had just got a job. We were going to celebrate together, but their life was cut short. There was such an awareness and such a immediate exposure for this tragedy, that it touched so many lives. There were so many prayer vigils that was done. The firefighters were in tears and was really touched by the tragedies. How do you explain to two mothers that their kids and grandkids are gone? We're just numb. And I don't understand how this happened. How do you explain to the woman why her sister, brother-in-law, nieces and nephews aren't here anymore? They're just a very good example of having joy within your family. How does the parent explain to their child why their friend that they said goodbye to at school on Friday won't be back at school on Monday? It's always hard to um, have to talk to your children about those kinds of things. I am sad because Kaylee was one of my best friends in school and I liked playing with her at recess. Are you gonna miss her? Mm-hmm. More than 100 people came to Saturday night's vigil knowing that right now, no explanation will do. There are no answers why this family of five is gone. But to the loved ones they've left behind, this support matters. It's, it's overwhelming, but at the same time, it gives you comfort and lets you know that people really do care and you know the world still has really good people in it. For those who came tonight the thought of 11 year old Noah, 6 year old Kaylee, 4 year old Hannah and their parents Stephen and Angela dying in this fire is too much to bear. I think that when tragedy comes into your life it does change your life. It rocks your world forever but in the sense of things being horrific and being terrible, they really are. But yet, during my tragedy, when I went through my difficulty, I experienced such a deep walk with God. He created an awareness in me, a deep awareness of what life is truly about and how to look into the eyes of another individual and really experience and see their pain and make that connection. Because everyone goes through hurt. And everybody needs somebody to listen to their heart and to just know that somebody truly cares and can connect with them. When I went through my tragedy, there was so much um, that happened uh, that really helped carry me through the tragedy. Um, I had an awareness of people and had people that cared about me. I had counseled many people through the years, through many difficulties, but I was on the other end of the spectrum and I needed the help. So therefore, my world fell apart. And therefore, I experienced both. And that just exploded everything within me because I knew that God was going to take me to places that I had never been before because no longer was I ministering the love of God from just the biblical uh, 
point of view, but I had to live and I had to go through this difficulty and these dark times to let me know how God carried me. And um, God rechanneled that and he allowed me to minister to people and people to, to connect with me. People wanted to hear my story, so I wanted to hear their story. So it just became such a love uh, of God that was experienced through everything that it it was edifying and um, I just allowed God to to carry me through I could have closed the door and said that's it my daughter's gone my three grandchildren are gone I'm just going to go in a dark room and close the door off to my life but God gave me that urgency that helped me Help me, and He will do that for you, my friends. Whatever difficulty that you're going through, the beauty of the Lord can shine through you, whatever the circumstance is. He wants us to shine His love and His glory because that's how He gets glorified is through our difficulty and our sufferings because look what Christ went through on the cross. You know, what I went through pales by far in comparison to what Christ did for us. But when you hurt and you're suffering, don't allow the enemy to put you in that place to where you're not functional, because that's what he wants to do. He wants you to close off your lifeline to Christ. And we are not to do that. We're not to allow him to do that, because in all things, God works together for the good for those who are called and chosen for his purpose. And if you can hang on to that scripture, that's been my favorite scripture for so long. It's Romans 8, 28. He will work things out in your life and you'll be surprised, wonderfully surprised how God puts purpose into our lives through difficulty, through suffering, through tragedy. And he will cause your life to be a blessing, to be blessed, to be a blessing to others. And that's what we've always tried to do through our tragedy um, and through sharing pearls, our radio program. And I, I just hope that if there's somebody listening today that you have a problem that you can't handle, that you call and you speak to a prayer counselor because you do not have to bear your burden alone. Someone can be there to pray for you. And if you want to listen to Sharing Pearls on Sundays from 3 to 5, we have prayer counselors there as well. And we'll be able to help you to the best of our knowledge to encourage you that God is still on the throne and there's still purpose in your life. Because Romans 8, 28 tells us that all things work together for the good for those who are called and chosen for his purpose. Did I ever think that this tragedy would happen in my life? No way. But I knew that I was prepared for this tragedy because God has taken me this far in my life by faith, by many years of preparation. And he's able to take that which happened as a tragedy and to be able to expound upon that, to make, to turn it into an avenue of connection with other people that go through many different hurts in their lives and difficulty, things that happen that is beyond our control. But we know that God is still in control because we know that He sees all things, He knows all things, and we can trust Him for whatever happens in this life, something that happens that's beyond our imagination will rock our world, but we will be able to continue, be able to connect with others, and God will take that and He will use it for His glory because He receives glory. testimony is one of the most powerful I've ever heard about the power, the love, and the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. I know you're sitting there in the comfort of your home trying to process what this woman has gone through. Debbie suffered the loss of her daughter. She raised in a Christian home, a son-in-law who obviously loved her daughter, 
three beautiful grandchildren in a house fire. It is hard for me to even process that loss as I think of my nieces and nephews and how much I love them. Debbie often refers to the verse in Romans 8, 28 that says, God causes all things to work together for the good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. See, that word all, that means just what it says, all. Just as the testimonies of the early church are written for us, for our edification and our wisdom and knowledge of the truth, that is why our show is so important. We give these powerful testimonies a platform to share all over the world. Remember our scripture in Revelations 12, 11, they overcome him, how? By the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives even unto death. Well, that is what you're experiencing today. You're witnessing firsthand the power of God found in the hope that does not disappoint. Debbie has stated to me so many times how she thrives on helping others. And she said that this hope is found in Jesus Christ, who has helped her rechannel this entire experience. The weakness has become her strength. She is a leader in church, women's groups, sings gospel music, and shares the gospel through her radio show called Sharing Pearls. You will see it later in the series. I want you to experience this same hope that does not disappoint. That is found in Jesus Christ today. Crossing Paths is a ministry that shows God's life-changing love through the power of a person's testimony. As we present stories of lives that God has changed, we also want to disciple our viewers by studying the Bible together. We are inviting you, the viewer, to a free weekly Zoom Bible study hosted by Pastor Ron Kosar every Wednesday at 11 o'clock a.m. Spending time in God's Word is the best way to grow as a believer. Because of our fast-paced lives, it can be hard to make time to read the Bible. As a team, we will read through the Bible in a year. That's why we would like you to become part of our First Stringers Partner Program. When you partner with Crossing Paths, you will receive our Bible Pathways monthly study book. This monthly publication will help guide you in reading the Bible completely within a year. First Stringers who donate $25, $40, or $80 a month, or also make a one-time $77 donation, will receive the book God's Promises for Your Every Need, as well as the Bible Pathways monthly study book. For partners who donate a one-time donation of $500 or $1,000, you will receive Pastor Ron's two books unveiling the New Covenant and the Jerusalem Council as well as our special book offer of the quarter. Join with Crossing Paths today to spread the gospel of Jesus through the power of testimony. Crossing Paths equips individuals to become overcomers by connecting people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. By your financial support and becoming a player on God's elite first stringers, you will partner with us to fulfill the Great Commission. We together will provide churches, ministries, and individuals a platform to share the power of God through their own personal testimonies. As you partner with Crossing Paths to make a one-time donation of $500 or $1,000, you enable this platform to be presented to the everyday person that needs God. You will also receive my two books, unveiling the new covenant and the Jerusalem Council, as well as our special book offer of the quarter. Remember, a person with a testimony of the power of God is never at the mercy of an individual who simply says there is no God. Welcome back. I think it is extremely important for you guys to understand. We mentioned it a little bit there in the intro, but when we scheduled this show, there was so much opposition. We never changed dates. So we had a date picked and was had all our guns set to that day and all of a sudden something happened. So we all get regathered and picked another day and said, okay, we're gonna shoot the show on this day. And then don't you know that something else happened again? And here we thought everything was going haywire so we, we called one of the places where we record and said, do you have an open day? And they said, yeah, it would be the 15th of April. Mm -hmm. And then I, I called Matt and I called Debbie and we worked everything out. Next thing you know, it was the 15th of April and I, I had no idea what day that was. Mm -hmm. And here it turns out that that was the day of that fire. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that, Deb, until you told me that on the phone. So 
Let's go back to that because I feel like we're hitting the devil right in the face with it and just give our audience a little summary of how, what took place there and did you ever find out what happened or just give us a summary of that and then we'll get into, you know, about the hope that doesn't disappoint. First of all, when I think about the hope that doesn't disappoint, that's a deep phrase that we all know we want to hold on to hope in whatever occurs in our life. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where it's a period of brokenness, but you know there's healing in brokenness because He does heal our brokenness and He also Mm -hmm. brings us through the valley, whatever the situation is, And his hand is always with us wherever we are in whatever phase that we are, whatever that's going on in life, Mm -hmm. he is there with us at all times. So he brings healing in our brokenness. And I'd like to focus on that because some people, they have a hard time adjusting when a tragedy happens and He gives us joy in place of the pain that we feel and the hurts that are Mm -hmm. deep within our hearts. Mm -hmm. And he gives us that sense of awareness that there's a bigger picture here. There's a healing here that occurs. And not only in my circumstance, but of other uh, folks that were aware of this tragedy, Um, the storyline, it went through the media, it went national, it went international news, because our family was a mother and a father and three children that died together, unexpected, in a fire situation. They died of smoke inhalation. Mm. But the good news is, is my family, they're in heaven. Amen. Amen. And they're together. Amen. And we celebrate. We celebrate the fact that they are home. We are here still making our journey together Mm -hmm. and we want to extend our condolences to those that have suffered through situations similar to this because it is a dark time and the reality, there is much loss. Mm -hmm. But the greater reality is to know that God's love will heal our wounds. Mm -hmm. He will take those scars Mm -hmm and he'll turn them into rainbows because God has taken my life into such a deep area of ministry to touch hurting lives. Mm -hmm. And it's only by his grace that I'm here today. And I feel that people need to know that it's okay to be broken because God takes brokenness Mm -hmm. and he repairs lives. Uh, through our brokenness, through our testimony, through how we made it through. People want to know the story and how did you get the strength to make it through such a tragedy? I can tell you that his strength is perfect. Amen. So therefore, I live in his strength, his purpose, and I'm able to live each day going forward, knowing that I have that blessed hope to see them again in heaven and while we're here, we're here for his service. You know, I, I saw this um, uh, storyline about Mr. Rogers uh-huh. and Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Mr. Rogers, if you go into La Trobe, you can see the wall of his story painted on the walls of uh, St. Vincent's College. And so true and so meaningful. But his motto in life is life is meant for service. Mm. And that grabbed me. I said, you know what? Mm. I know that witnessed in my spirit that if we can get that mindset to know that there is life beyond this life, that we can serve others, that we can look above our hurts and our brokenness, Mm. and we can reach out to a hurting world and give them hope, Mm. give them encouragement, give them prayers and let them know how powerful our God is in the reality Yes, have I suffered brokenness? Yes, but my God is greater than any brokenness that I have suffered. But my children, 
the night of the tragedy, we were actually getting ready to celebrate my youngest granddaughter's birthday the next day. The last conversation that I had with my daughter, I was at store buying presents for my granddaughter for her birthday. And we were in such a ray of joy knowing that Hannah would be four years old and we were going to come together as a family and celebrate. Mm. And my son-in-law, <clears throat> Stephen, he had been looking for a job for two or three years and suffered some depression because he wasn't getting any luck. He had a degree in IT uh, networking with computers and there was no opening. So he did get a job a week before this tragedy at FIA being a, a collections counselor. And so we were going to celebrate the new chapter ready to begin. But little did we know that that new chapter mm -hmm. was going to be in heaven. Amen. What a great chapter that is when you can rejoice and celebrate <laughs> to know mm. that there is a blessed hope that we all have that one day, every sorrow, every pain, every, everything that we suffered in this life will be in the past mm. and how beautiful heaven must be. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. My daughter, Angela, she was 38 years young. My grandson, Noah, was 11. My granddaughter, Kaylee, was six. My granddaughter, Hannah, was four. And my son-in-law was 41. Mm. His name was Stephen. But when I think about them now, I think about that blessed hope. Mm. Mm. And I know that God has t carried me through everything that we've been through. I know that all the hugs, all the cards, all the love, all the prayers, much appreciated during that time. And it just opened up my mind to have that awareness that people need each other. Like Pastor uh, Ron was sharing, they need to see flesh behind mm. those prayers. Right. They need to see someone truly make an effort to show true comfort in a time of sorrow and distress. It draws people together because we are here in this life. We're all of the same flesh, the same blood, but we have choices to make. Mm. And the choices that we make is we can be an instrument that God can use to bless others, or we can choose to take the other road. Well, I choose to take the high road that leads to heaven. I don't want to have any part of the low road because there's only distress there. There's only depression there. There's only uh, a, a lot of hurts mm. that are left unresolved, but God is in control. Yeah. And if you're listening today, I ask that you would pray that you would renew your relationship with God mm -hmm. because whatever you've been through, God will turn it around for your good. As Romans 8, 28 says mm -hmm. that he will do so. Whatsoever you feel in this life has hurt you to that point that you have scars in your life. Amen. Turn them over to Jesus Amen. because he will, he will love you where you're at and he will show you and nurture you and show you how to grow and to allow him to be your Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 And you know, tomorrow is not promised to any That's of right, us. Buddy. So, you know, Pastor Ron, we're going to we're going to actually, first of all, cut to a commercial for some really important information. And then Pastor Ron is going to come back with a pastor's perspective and um, talk about that is um, how important it is for your salvation with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Through May and June, we have a special offer to anyone who donates $100, $500, or $1,000. I want to personally send you my four e-booklets on the special three times a year to give. This is a four-part series that also points to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. This series alone changed my life. This is in addition to the four books we are now offering to all of our elite first stringers. Yes, this is a total of eight books. I promise these will increase your knowledge and build your faith in Jesus Christ. Please partner with us today and become a part of our team to fulfill the Great Commission. And always remember, 
God loves a cheerful giver, and he will always supply seed to the sower. Remember when I said you cannot tell a book by its cover? Mm -hmm. Well, now you should know exactly what I meant. Debbie looks like a nice, innocent Christian lady who has life all together. You would have no idea what she has been through. Mm. She is a warrior, a woman of God. She is faithful, tough, and committed to the cause of Jesus mm. Christ. Yes, she does have that hope that does not disappoint. I want to encourage every one of our viewers today that that's the whole focus of this show is to look at a person that has been through so much and has learned the secret of how to overcome. See, 1 Peter 2.20 says, for what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults, you take that patiently? But when you do good and suffer for it, if you take that patiently, mm -hmm. this is really what finds favor with God. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11, it says this, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times hmm. that it might depart from me. Hmm. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. For in my, for in my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now this is what Debbie said during this short little interview. She had no idea that that was in this pastor's perspective, mm. that in her, in her weakness, her strength is found perfect. Mm. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities mm. that the power of Christ Amen. may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure actually in these infirmities, mm. in reproaches, in need, listen, in persecutions, <laughs> in distress, hmm. for Christ's sake. No. For when I am weak, hmm. then I am strong. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now these things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. It is our prayer today that in crossing paths that you find the power strength and peace, hope that Debbie Abraham has found. These supernatural attributes can only be found in a personal yeah. relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have never asked Jesus Christ in your heart, uh, it is my prayer that you would do that today. Mm -hmm. Confess your sins, ask him into your heart, ask him to be both Lord and Savior and to fill you with the Holy Spirit and the power of God in Jesus' name. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Amen. Please donate today and help us continue to bring testimonies like this to those in need of a Savior around the world. We love and appreciate you. Always remember to keep seeking the truth because it is only the truth that you know will set you free. And that truth's name is Jesus.